Let's start with the fact that social media is harming the mental health of more than half of Canadian kids. In fact, the 2023 Dove Self-Esteem Project Research for Kids Online Safety finds most experts agree social media is fueling a youth mental health crisis. Here to dive into that and what it really means is psychotherapist Jake Ernst. All right, Jake, you work with teens on a daily basis. Help us understand the landscape of the teenage world. Well, the first thing that I would say is that it is very, very hard to be a teenager nowadays. So you're exactly right. In your opener there, you're really normalizing, I think, for a lot of us that it's hard to be a teenager. And now add in that layer of social media on top of that, that makes it even more challenging to do so. We can actually trace back the history and we can look at the rise in the mental health rates that we're currently seeing. And we can actually bring it all the way back to 2012. That's when these started. When we go back to 2010, we can actually launch into why, why was this occurring? And at that time, we know that the iPhone 4 was the first smart smartphone to have a front-facing camera, which enabled the development of a ton of photo sharing apps like Instagram, Snapchat, and quite frankly, changed the way that we all connect and all relate. Now, map onto that, so you have Generation Z, which is the first generation to go through puberty with a smartphone in hand. And as a therapist, that raises some concerns. I don't think we fully understand the impact of that quite yes, yet. But essentially, we transition them from a play-based childhood into a phone-based one. So interesting that you can actually like pinpoint the date, right? So as a psychotherapist, I'm wondering what teenagers are coming to you to talk about. And do you feel like there is a social media addiction happening right now? I wouldn't call it social media addiction. I would just say point blank that social media is addicting. I think that when we personalize these issues, we get lost in the weeds a lot and we don't get to surface the right conversation. And I think the right conversation is that these apps are designed to be addictive. Mm -hmm. They are like little mini slot machines in our pockets that keep us hooked and keep us trapped. And that's not just for teenagers. I think we can all look around as adults and check in with our own social media behavior and look at the impact that that has on us. There was a study that was done this past summer, and it found that 95% of teenagers have a smartphone now. And of the 97% of people that use the internet every single day, half of teenagers are using it almost constantly, meaning that they are constantly tapped in. In middle school and high school, that is a key developmental period where they need to be figuring out relationships. And so when you insert a device in between that process that keeps people self-focused, keeps people in comparison mode, in where do I fit, where do I belong, and it really makes it difficult for kids to navigate that. And so I'm talking about that with kids every single day. So interesting. No, I would put my hand up as being addicted for sure. So you're right. It's just the gamification of everything, right? You want to get in there uh, and be playing with your phone. I want to hear from the teenagers now in the audience. So just by a show of hands, everybody, uh, how many of you are on social media? That's it? Most of you. Well, most of you are on social media. How about the, the parents? Social media? OK. All right, how many of you are on TikTok? Put up your hand if you're TikTokers. How many of you are Snapchatters? What about Instagrammers? How many of you are on social media mostly because your friends are on social media? And how many of you come off of social media from time to time, like you just get off of social media completely? OK, there's a few hands out there. Any of you feel that you might be addicted to social media? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. OK, um, I want to talk to Samantha now, because you are not on social no, media. No, no, no. Why did you get off social media, Samantha? Well, initially, I joined social media because everyone, was, every, everyone else was on it. Yeah. And I wanted to um, connect with friends, but then I felt the need to always constantly check up on everyone's lives and the trends and even post about my life. People at school were stalking me and, um, you know, frequently involving themselves into my life. And it really made me feel uncomfortable, even especially when they're talking negatively about me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's when I realized I needed to take time off of social media and stop depending on it. I shouldn't be able to um, depend on my self-worth on other people. It says self-worth, not everyone else's worth. Yes, all right. right, all right, yeah. all right, yes! <laughs> now, I'm gonna move on to Zoe yeah. now, Samantha, but thank you so much for that. So you are not on Snapchat, you're not on TikTok, your friends are. What is it like, Zoe, to 
not be on these platforms when your friends are? It's pretty, I'm proud of myself for not being on Snapchat and TikTok because I see a lot of my friends that are just on it constantly and I've seen how it's like changed them to how they act, who they like are friends with and how they wear like their clothes and it bothers me a lot but I find like in myself that I'm happy not having it. Yeah. I do have Instagram but I'm not on it like constantly. Mm -hmm. But I just find like a lot of my friends have changed so much and it bothers me. So I'm proud of myself for not having it because I really don't want to like change who I am because of everyone else. I want to stay like myself. Mm -hmm. Does it ever feel isolating when they're all sitting around on their phones? Like I've seen my kids and they'll all be together but they're all on their phones. It doesn't really affect me a lot. I do try and like tell my friends to get off their phones because it's <laughs> like I know they're like too captivated into it. Yeah. I want to say a big shout out to PEI because that's where you came in from, isn't Woo! it? Thank you. That's so good. Love having you here. Okay, I want to talk to Sean now for a sec. Sean, you are off social media as well. So what propelled you to get off social media? I'm sorry, hon. Um, I just felt like I had no use for it any anymore. Yeah, it wasn't um, working for you? No. I just, I had it as like Thinking is like if I wanted to talk to any of my friends that I didn't have a phone number for. Yeah. But like if I didn't have a phone number, it's probably because I'm not talking to them. Right. <laughs> um, and so I was just scrolling mindlessly a lot of the time, and I yeah. just I don't miss it now that I don't have it. You know. Yeah, it's one of those things where the less you do it, the less you need to do it, and the more you do it, the more you want to do it. I'm yeah. just speaking from my experience, right? <laughs> Savvy, are you on uh, social media? I am. I find that I mostly like long-form entertainment, though, like movies yeah. and TV shows, but um, uh, social media is, is like pretty fun to scroll on like mindlessly and uh, short when I have a short attention span. Yes. It's very fulfilling, but you're good at self-regulating yourself, though. Like, how yeah. do you how do you do that? Do you have some tools and resources that you use to just get you off? I mean, sometimes I'll like pick up a sh a small hobby. Like right yeah. now, my mom and I are doing Rubik's cubes. Oh, good for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, or I'll watch like a movie or read a book or something else that's not me going on my phone because it's yeah. so easy to just go to the next video. Totally. So. I hear you've got a flip phone. So does that keep you, that keeps you off all the apps too? Because you can use it. That's the cutest flip phone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really, really good. Okay, I love it because I'm learning from you all. Thank you all for that. That's fantastic. And Jake, I've got another one for you now. I just want to know, what are some of the solutions to the problems the social media might be throwing at teenagers right now? Well, the first thing I would say is kudos to all of you in the audience who are modulating, regulating your use. I think that's just so admirable, especially to go against the grain. That's really hard to do. So good for you. Uh, keep that up. I would say a note to the parents. Uh, we want to really do a bit of a reframe here. It's, we're actually not concerned about how long kids are on social media anymore. We're actually more concerned about how they're using their devices. And so the kid who's on TikTok socializing with friends, connecting and talking about, you know, their night and having fun, that's all really good. That's really good buffer for well-being. Um, in addition to that, I would say that we want to really catch the kids who are doing long form solo passive use. So that's like scrolling on TikTok, getting caught in YouTube rabbit holes and getting lost in there. I, I often share with parents that giving a kid a phone at this age is like giving them a plane ticket around the world to free travel wherever they can and wherever they want. So I would say in addition to that, uh, to know your situation, really just know uh, how your nervous system and how your stress is affected by your phone and by your device. We can actually train our algorithm, so this would be number two, is to really uh, get clear on what is healthy for me, what is helping me, what makes me feel happy, what makes me feel good. And if it doesn't, then that's a swipe back swipe past, right? We can train our algorithm to not show us the content that we don't want to see. Lastly, uh, I have a really fun one, actually. This, you may find this interesting. Everyone take out your phone. I want to show you how to turn your phone into grayscale. This is going to be great for exam periods, for times when you want to take a lot of the dopamine out of your device, the thing that keeps you trapped there and the, keep, the thing that keeps it really addicting. So go into the gear, the settings of your app. You're going to swipe down so it reveals the search function. And you're going to type in color filters you'll see that you can turn color filters on and off. You're gonna turn it on and shift it into grayscale. I use my phone in grayscale all the time and it just takes the, the dopamine right out of it, makes it much less addicting and it makes it more likely that you'll be able to uh, feel good. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna try that too. 
Jake, that is so good. Great tips. I love that. It's less fun when it's just black and white. Now, if you know someone uh, who needs mental health support today, or if you are that someone, please visit kidshelpphone.ca or call the number on your screen. There's someone to pick up your call 24 hours a day. Thank you so much, Jake. Oh my gosh, and thank you so much to these super brilliant teens in our audience today for being so candid. If social media doesn't change for kids, their lives will. Learn more and sign the letter supporting kids' online safety. Just visit our website, cityline.tv, for more info.